Hello, I'm Mark Schechter with Ideal Luxury, where we buy, sell, trade, and make loans on fine watches, diamonds, and jewelry. Welcome to Question Mark, where we answer popular questions about these luxury items. Today we're going to discuss the Rolex Daytona, the holy grail of Rolexes, and it just celebrated its 50th anniversary. Let's take a closer look at why this watch is so popular. Why is this the holy grail? Of watches. Again, this is a 40 millimeter stainless steel Rolex Daytona. In this case, a 116520 with the white dial. Okay, so chronograph. What do you mean by chronograph? Whenever you see a watch with these smaller subdials on the main dial and a mechanism pushers above and below. The crown, it's typically going to be a chronograph, which is a fancy way of saying stopwatch. You'll notice that the center second hand is not moving. The seconds of the day on a chronograph are going to be one of the subdials. In this case, the subdial that's at 6 o'clock. The center second hand is part of the stopwatch function. So if I push the top pusher, you'll see that that second hand starts to sweep around in traditional Rolex fashion then I can stop it and I can reset it with the bottom button. Again this is consistent with most chronographs and it's not any different with Rolex. This crown unscrews again Rolex invented the waterproof watch case once it pops out you can set the, the time move those hands around try to block that nice red Daytona marking on the dial screw it down. It's not watertight unless you screw that down. If it's open, you can water can roll right in, so be careful. And then a popular question is, is the water is the watch waterproof when the pushers aren't screwed down? It is. However, if you're under the water and you were to depress one of the pushers and they weren't screwed down, it would let water into the watch case. So you want to make sure that you screw those down if you're going to go swimming and also rinse the wash the watch with fresh water afterwards. The bezel you'll notice is unique. It doesn't rotate but it does have a lot of numbers on it. This is a, a tachometer bezel and basically what it does, you'll see it says units per hour, whether it be kilometers or miles. Theoretically you could sit at the finish line on a track. The car goes by you could start the timer. Again the Daytona, the chronograph, it was designed for racing for track times synonymous with auto racing. So you could have a one kilometer or a one mile track, a loop. The car could go all the way around the loop, make its way back, and when it crossed the line in front of you again, and you stop it, you'll see that right now the second hand is lined up with get a good shot of that. 180 on the bezel. That would indicate that it was either car was either going 180, actually 160, 160, or 160 miles per hour and or kilometers per hour. That's what that bezel does, plain and simple. So you've got hours, minutes, you've got seconds of the day, which is continuously moving at 6 o'clock. You've got the seconds for the stopwatch. I'll reset that back up to 12. And then these other subdials are for minutes of the stopwatch and hours of the stopwatch. So if you were timing something that was greater than a minute and or an hour, you'd be able to keep track of that as well. The watch uh, either comes in a bracelet or a leather strap. It comes with a white dial or a black dial. In this case, we've got a stainless steel. Notice that the bracelet, the oyster bracelet, Rolex oyster bracelet, is satin, polished satin, as opposed to satin, 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 let's say for a submariner. That's synonymous with the... Daytona. The watch comes in stainless steel like this. Also comes an 18 karat yellow gold center link. Comes in 18 karat yellow rolls or white gold. As well as for the 50th anniversary they introduced a platinum version. A solid platinum version. $75,000 watch. Uh, an ice blue dial with chestnut or brown markings. Kind of unique. You either love it or hate it. But that's the watch and the forms that it comes in. What makes this watch so unique? So there's a, a few theories on this. We'll start with uh, the actor, Paul Newman. 
Paul Newman, obviously uh, very famous for his movies, but also uh, was into auto racing. And as the story goes, his wife, Joanne Woodward, gave him one when he started racing. And he wore it when he raced, and they say he wore it until the day he died. Now, the one he wore, the model he wore, this was an older watch. This was a watch manufactured in the 60s with a four-digit model number, like a, a 6238 or a 6265. Would have had a... Uh, uh, a different caliber movement. The watch actually had a different dial to it. And this is what makes his watch famous. Kind of like a president. Rolex calls it a day date. They don't call it a president. There's a Paul Newman. That's not a Rolex. Uh, that's not Rolex nomenclature. That's uh, that's history. Over time, we've called the watch the Paul Newman. His watch actually was white. It was a panda dial. It was white with black subs. The sub dials had crosshairs. They were also, uh, again, the seconds of the day would have been at 9 o'clock. It would have had a, a bubble crystal, a, a synthetic crystal, as opposed to a modern thin sapphire crystal. Instead of the seconds of the day being uh, 60, 20, 40, it was 15, 30, 45, and 60, so some subtleties to it. Um, but the fact that he wore it, he raced, and he was such a famous actor... Uh, is one of the reasons that the watch got so much notoriety. Another unique part of it is that Rolex is a watch manufacturer, and they pride themselves on that. Their Rolex movement, when they introduced the, the chronograph, uh, the Daytona initially, it was not a Rolex movement. The movement, the Daytona that Paul Newman wore, was a Valjou movement, a caliber 72. They used that movement from 1963 to 1987. Those four-digit non-oyster Daytonas are Valjou movements. Again, Rolex using someone else's movement, but the watch gained popularity, I'm sure, in great part due to Paul Newman using the watch and being seen with it racing and, and filming movies. They went to the Zenith El Primero caliber 4030 movement. They did, did that in 1988, the five digit 16520 Daytona. You'll notice the clasp is a, a flip lock clasp, it's not this fat clip, newer style clasp, if you will. But that 16520 made up and through 1999 actually has the Zenith movement. And some of those actually bring pretty good money if they're complete. The watch, Primero, the El Primero movement was very reliable, very accurate, but they could meet the demand that Rolex was seeing for this model. And again, you had a Rolex watch with the Zenith movement. Uh, you typically have to take the back case off and look at the rotor to see if it's a 4030 Zenith movement or a 4130 Rolex movement. You can look at the clasp. A couple subtleties, those dials again, 4130 modern, you're going to have the seconds of the day at 6 o'clock versus 9 o'clock. Another real subtle thing, these markers at 3, 6, and 9 on the modern Daytona are square. The Zenith, they're actually rectangular, very subtle difference. But in 2000, Rolex introduced the 4130, their own chronograph movement. They've been using it uh, ever since. So again, was it Paul Newman? Was it the fact that they were using someone else's movement? The stainless steel Daytona is really the model that is sought after. It's a, it's a, you can get a used one that in a lot of cases might sell for more than it did new. And if it's 20 years old or older, it could be significantly more than the watch sold for new. Why would a stainless steel 1985 Daytona be worth more than a two-tone Daytona that might have gold? Well, the final theory for its uniqueness is the manufacturing limits. Uh, my understanding is they make 5% in stainless steel like this. They'll make 15% in two-tone, the remaining 80% and all gold or now they make a platinum version so you get the same movement in a let's say twelve thousand dollar stainless steel watch as you would in a forty thousand or seventy five thousand dollar all gold or all platinum watch uh, that might be one of the theories one thing's for sure it is the holy grail of rolexes it's a great watch to have if you don't have one and uh not instantly recognizable people know the subs and the presidents they won't necessarily know that this is a daytona unless they're kind of in the know, and that's what makes it so much fun. Well, hopefully now you have a better understanding of why the Daytona is so popular. Certainly a unique history, limited in production, and understated for a Rolex. Certainly a popular collector's item. 
That's all we have for today. If you'd like your question answered or would like to learn more about buying, selling, trading, or borrowing from Ideal Luxury, feel free to visit our website or give us a call. Thank you.